Although the Pacific Ocean takes the prize for most polluted ocean in the world, the Atlantic Ocean is not far behind, and much of the Atlantic's non-degradable trash seems to come from the American city of Baltimore, where people don't seem to care where they dump their trash. But one Baltimore native came up with a smart way to trap mountains of trash before they float into the Chesapeake Bay. Here are the details. CNET reports that a new invention has been having great success in solving the problem of plastic trash that flows into the harbor of Baltimore City. The inventor of the machine, former museum director John Kellett, said he came up with the idea when he started thinking of ways to mitigate the mountains of plastic trash that would flow into the harbor every time it rained. Kellett combined a water wheel with a design for a hay baler to create Mr. Trash Wheel, a 50-meter machine weighing nearly 50 tons. The Chesapeake River's current rotates the watermill, powering a system of pulleys that, in turn, run a large conveyor belt with rake-like teeth that scoop up floating soda cans, plastic bags, bottles, styrofoam plates, cigarette butts, and other detritus. Two long buoys help funnel trash toward Mr. Trash Wheel's maw and into a floating dumpster that's emptied by a small crew of volunteers. Since launching in 2014, Mr. Trash Wheels has intercepted more than 1.5 million tons of garbage. For times when the river isn't flowing fast enough, Mr. Trash Wheel also sports solar panels and batteries. Kellett can turn on the pumps via his smartphone and check on his invention 24-7 via an online webcam. Do you like oysters? You might not after watching this. 8 million tons of plastic is dumped into the ocean every year, and we don't even know where most of that ends up. However, experts have found that drug-resistant bacteria thrives in this pollution especially on tiny particles called microplastics, and they're worried it could spread fatal diseases in the food chain. Here is what they discovered. A new study by the University of Exeter and the Center for Environment, Fisheries, and Aquaculture Science says critical questions remain about microplastics and possible threats to food production and safety. Microplastics are plastic particles less than 5 millimeters in diameter. They can be created when larger plastic products break down, such as plastic bottles, clothing fibers, and cigarette filters. They are also intentionally added to some cosmetics and personal hygiene products. Human and animal pathogens, such as bacteria, can colonize microplastics, forming slimy buildups called biofilms. In a press release on the new research from the University of Exeter, the author cited a study which found high concentrations of antibiotic-resistant bacteria on microplastics 100 times to 5,000 times higher than in surrounding seawater. Microplastic fragments differ markedly from natural floating particles, and there is growing evidence that they represent a potential reservoir of pathogens, said study co-author Sari Lewis of Exeter's Global Systems Institute. Microplastics can transport these pathogens to new parts of the ocean. The authors of the study expressed particular concern about bivalves such as oysters and mussels. These filter feeders can take in microplastics from the seawater, and diseases from pathogens found on microplastics have been known to kill these mollusks. This transfer of pathogens from the microplastics to bivalves could threaten aquaculture, which is expected to play an important role in feeding the world's growing population. Humans who come into contact with seafood may also be exposed to these pathogens. Bacteria from a genus called Vibrio, a globally important group of human and animal pathogens that are increasing in incidence, have been found in high levels in microplastics, said co-author Craig Baker Austin of the Center for Environment, Fisheries, and Aquaculture Science. Some Vibrio bacteria are known to contribute to disease in bivalves, often causing mass mortality among larvae and in some cases mortality within adult bivalve populations, he said. Dr. Lewis from the University of Exeter said shining a light on this pressing issue is really important and it's only going to get worse if we keep dumping plastics into the ocean at the current rate. Plastic pollution is a global problem that is causing an environmental disaster in the world's oceans, and scientists have now found that the Mediterranean Sea is also filling up with plastic at a very high rate. Scientists have previously documented how the Pacific and other oceans are filling up with plastic trash that cover the sea floor or drift on the surface to form floating trash dumps the size of countries. One of these floating trash dumps is called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, and it's three times the size of France. According to Reuters, scientists are now studying where all this ocean-destroying trash comes from and have found that most of it comes from rivers in Indonesia, China, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Thailand. A recent study published by the International Union for Conservation of Nature has now also raised the alarm in the Mediterranean Sea. The study found that around 230,000 tons of plastic trash is dumped in the sea per year, and this number is expected to double by 2040 if ambitious steps are not taken soon. 
The study found that the nations most guilty of dumping plastic in the Mediterranean are Italy, Turkey, and Egypt. However, on a per capita basis, it is the individuals of Montenegro, Albania, Bosnia-Herzegovina, and North Macedonia who throw the most trash in nature. The solution for this problem is a very elusive goal, and different people have different ideas of how to solve this problem. In the end, it seems obvious that nations and individuals need to educate themselves to the point where they can understand how important it is to recycle plastic, and not to simply dump it in nature. The Ocean Cleaner's plastic catching system is now collecting and retaining plastic debris from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch for the first time, the nonprofit organization announced on Wednesday. The Ocean Cleanup redesigned its cleanup system earlier this year and added a parachute in order for the system to collect plastic at a more consistent speed. The company explained on their website that their previous system failed to retain plastic as the system would travel either faster or slower than the plastic. This meant that the plastic would float into the system only for it to float out of it. System 001B uses a parachute to allow natural winds and waves to move plastic into the system to prevent the plastic from floating out of the cleanup system. The system's plastic collecting screen has been moved forward to prevent fracturing to its floating barrier. Ocean Cleanup explained on their website that the organization added bigger boats to the system's cork line in order to increase buoyancy. These are stacked on top of one another to prevent plastic waste from floating to the middle of the plastic collecting screen and the floating barrier. In a news release, the organization explained that the system has successfully collected large pieces of plastic waste and ghost nets that are typically used for fishing. The system was also able to collect microplastics as tiny as one millimeter from the Pacific Ocean. The plastic will eventually be returned to land for recycling. Ocean Cleanup said they will start designing its next cleanup system, System 002, which will be able to collect and retain plastics for longer periods of time. A floating device designed to trap plastic trash in the ocean has been upgraded in a second attempt to clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The Guardian reports that the Ocean Cleanup Project System 001 is a floating 600-meter-long U-shaped barrier that's meant to collect plastic debris in the ocean. The project's main goal is to clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, a massive island of garbage in the Pacific Ocean between California and Hawaii. Last September, System 001 was towed from San Francisco to the patch, but problems arose during its first cleanup attempt. While the system managed to catch plastic waste, it struggled to maintain sufficient speeds and was unable to retain the collected trash. The floating boom also broke apart under constant winds and waves, reports The Guardian. According to Ocean Cleanup, an upgraded design dubbed System 001B is currently being redeployed to the patch. The screen has been brought forward in order to eliminate the rail connection that caused the boom fracture and the heavy stabilizing frames removed to ease the load on the pipe. The size of the barrier has also been reduced by a factor of three in order to speed up procurement, assembly, and towing. New features include the attachment of inflatable buoys in the opening, which will tow the system forward, propelling it using the force of the wind. Should the buoys fail to speed it up, an alternative option is to attach a parachute-like sea anchor that will turn the system around and bring the speed close to the speed of the water. As the project found out, the speed of the system doesn't actually matter. What's crucial is consistency, since its fluctuations in the speed are what prevent plastic from staying in the system. Ocean Cleanup CEO Boyan Slat had previously said he hopes to deploy 60 of the systems, which could remove half of the accumulated plastic in the patch in five years. It's unclear how these system issues, or what Slat calls unscheduled learning opportunities, will impact that timeline. The Ocean Cleanup, the Dutch nonprofit organization developing technologies to rid the world's oceans of plastic, is wrapping up production of its Interceptor, an autonomous system that removes plastic waste from rivers, before it is able to reach the ocean. The Ocean Cleanup currently has three interceptors operating in Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Dominican Republic, with a fourth due to launch in Vietnam early next year. On Thursday, December 10th, the organization announced a partnership with Cone Cranes, a Finnish company that produces lifting equipment. Cone Cranes will handle manufacturing, installation, and maintenance of the interceptor with local partners. The company is already building two interceptors at its MHE DMAG facility in Klang, Malaysia. The interceptor is powered by solar energy and uses lithium-ion batteries, which theoretically enables it to operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The vessel is anchored to the riverbed and uses a floating barrier that guides plastic waste from the river into the system's conveyor belt. 
Once plastic waste is on board, it is automatically put into one of six dumpsters on a barge inside the system. The system alerts local operators once all six dumpsters on board are full. Local operators then send over a vessel to collect the plastic waste. The barge is taken back to shore with the plastic waste and emptied for recycling. The barge is then reattached to the interceptor to collect more plastic debris. Ocean Cleanup states on its website that the interceptor is capable of extracting 50,000 kilograms of trash a day. The organization claims that under optimal conditions, that number could increase to 100,000 kilograms of waste per day. Ocean Cleanup has ambitious plans of tackling 1,000 of the world's most polluting rivers by 2025. The organization says it has established that these waterways, which comprise 1% of the world's rivers, are responsible for 80% of plastic waste present in oceans. In October, the organization announced that it would sell sunglasses made from plastic it has recycled from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch to help fund its operators. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.